along. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Yes. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, uh, we got a milk. We got a totally milk. Let's go milk. All right. Happy sitting there, standing there waiting. Like most people, they have like a, a vessel, a bucket. Thank you, Happy. Have a bucket and they milk into it and they let shit fall into it, debris. Mm -hmm. Or or they'll have like a, a, a cheesecloth over the, over the bucket so that they're milking um, and all the debris falls onto the cheesecloth. But still, if you're milking through a cheesecloth that has a layer of debris on it, then you're basically just making milk debris tea, you know? So uh, th this way, nothing actually ever falls in because you're milking it at an angle. Um, but when it starts to get full, then you gotta pour it out. You gotta empty it. <laughs> Good girl, thank you. So yeah, uh, people make it way too complicated with the thinking that they have to wash teats and stuff like that. The reason they wash the teats is so that they don't get the, the, the debris tea. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't have to wash the teats or get the debris tea if they would just uh, hold something from this size to like the largest you can do this with comfortably meat is like a half, uh, half gallon milk bottle because they have the handle on them and you can hold them hold them sideways really easily still thank you all right we're almost done but yeah see if you hold it sideways like this then nothing can physically fall and it's just a way smarter way of milking i don't understand why no one else does it uh when you milk them uh like how i do you're using the back of your hand is able to kind of strip down mm -hmm. uh the milk that's uh that's inside the the that first layer of because like the, basically the, the the breast is a huge sponge mm -hmm. um with uh, a, a layer on the outside and um the milk is trickling out of the, out to the outskirts of the sponge and then running down mm -hmm. and so you can like kind of strip or, or kind of like how you do a ketchup packet mm -hmm. you know you or a toothpaste you move, you move it all the way to the end you can use your your palm to to work work it down towards the teat and then once it gets into the teat then and the teat gets filled then you squeeze the teat in succession uh, starting from the top to the bottom so that uh, so that it puts pressure um, uh, on the milk in the teat to push all the way out of the teat so um, you have to bump a couple, a couple times and make sure you get everything out of there because if you don't um, then uh, it, it their lactations will lower um, uh, over time you can keep their lactations at the same quantity if you keep milking them the same amount and you keep feeding them the same amount but if you're not milking them fully out each time then they're going to produce less because there's less of a demand on it the wider the collar it is the less it's putting pressure on any one place and, and uh, giving her pain and so it gives her incentive to continue pulling and tugging so it, it cuts off her circulation more um uh more often when she has a wider uh a wider band around her neck than when she has a, a little string. So a little string starts to cut into her and she oh, this is uncomfortable. So she stops pulling her, or she stops uh, dragging her heels, catches up. So yeah, uh, the skinnier uh, paracord, paracord always works, but f except for her, like I said, she's like the most stubborn um, and disobedient sheep I've ever had. Still awesome though. And your milk is awesome, thank you. So, um, yeah, but I need to try. Oh, she does not tolerate a collar at all. She hates collar, or I mean, uh, harnesses. Um, I've tried harnesses, and she just she doesn't ever get used to them. Like, still the next day, she's freaking out, rubbing her head on something like like, just freaking out. This is JC. She's super easy to milk because <sighs> she's like eight years old. Yes, good sheep. Thank you. Um, if, uh, if I'm going to start Ro uh, milking Rosie here in the next days and she has a lot finer wool, much finer. Um, so I have to actually spend, it's about three times finer than this wool. Okay. Or let's just say twice, twice as fine. It's twice as fine. And I have to spend at least twice as much time, um, rubbing, rubbing down her udder area to try to get the debris off. See like the debris? The fall around there and then I just look it off. But um so uh the finer the wool, the more shit it's able to hold. The more debris. And so um you get more debris falling 
while you're milking and that's really important. The things that I'm doing are everyone who has property is going to have some have to have someone like me or you or so, someone who isn't them to have a wagon like this to take their livestock off property. They're going to need a wagon because they're going to need to haul enough water uh, uh, for themselves and the animals for the day. They're going to need to haul guns and ammunition to protect them from from predators and from from people, marauders. And they're going to have to um, have to have food and entertainment hauled uh, to keep keep them wanting to stay out there and do it. Um, but the property owners themselves can't really do that unless they have a big enough family to for some of them to stay behind and guard the house. Um, this is the optimal girth of a spinning stick um, for at least for my size hands. Um, so you start with just one one individual little lock mm -hmm. and um, hold it in between your pinky and your palm and then your pointer and, and your thumb you're kind of stretching it mm -hmm. and you can put all the fingers on it but uh, but you're going to be pulling from the center is the, the whole point and pinching on the ends so that you're helping because if you try to if you try to hold it sideways and pull the fibers along each other then they just they, all the barbs catch so pulling them directly away from the line of uh, the stack of, of fibers is the quickest way easiest way to get it apart just take it kind of form it like a dough or something into like a, an elongated mass and just start making it more elongated in any number of ways that you wish to do that. I, I'm doing it like this. I try to, I try to pull and, and then rotate the mass so that I'm not, I'm not uh, pulling on the same strands each time. I'm not holding on to the same strands, mixing it up. This is how I start off. I just pull it out a little bit more right there and then twist twist away from myself and then I hold it in my left hand because I'm left-handed and twist around and about right there I hold on and I start letting it free spin in my hand and that twists it up try to do that um, you're you're uh, here, here I'll, I'll try it a different way um, I'm, if you're if if I wasn't doing this with my fingers, I would it would just be leading itself around. But I'm I'm helping helping it. That's why I do my the, the back fingers thing. It's kind of crazy. All right, so you approve? <laughs> I love your spoon. It's awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. You like it? Everything's great. Everything is great. Good. <laughs> Pear butter is good. So the deal is, if you want to hang out, you got to uh, just eat the stuff that we got available. Um, and if you want more than that, then then you, we got to go work for a farm or go to a farm stand and barter for um, uh, barter for anything else you want. Because that's what we're going to have to do eventually. If, yeah. we, if we want to be free people. Huh. Did you sleep well? Good. First night sleeping, imagining sleeping in your own, your own wagon. <laughs> you even had the, you haven't you even had the lambs nibbling on, on your sleeping bag and messing with you, huh? Good sheep. Yeah. Proper welcome. Good sheep. Yeah. How do you like it? It's great. Thanks for sharing. Thank you for being brave enough. This one's uh, from January 30th. It's the high moisture, high moisture one. I'm a worker from the orchards. Yeah, you guys are awesome. I always try to uh, ask, do you want to try some sheep milk? Yeah. Did, did you just drink your glasses of it? Nice. Is it still good? <laughs> yeah, there's like a tiny bit. All right. Here. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see you with. Uh, yeah, you guys are always a lot more adventurous than like uh, than um, the other uh, the other people around here. All the orchard workers, the Hispanic ones, love to try the sheep milk. I haven't tasted it. I want to taste it after you to see uh, what you're tasting. Because 
Um, uh, I milked uh, an hour ago. Taste it right at the jar? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can you can water follow it if you want. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have it for sale uh, or anything. This is just mine and and my friend we. we yeah, this is this, this stuff is good. Is, let me see if store. it's still sweet. Better than the store. Oh yeah, this yeah. is the wild broccoli. You try it. Just a little bud part. The whole yeah, the whole thing like it's a like you're eating a broccoli head. I'm gonna eat that one. Tastes like broccoli. Right? Mm -hmm. Got good texture, huh? Mm hmm. There you go. That's cool. That's perfect, actually. Did it's it. Not a lot faster than I thought it would. Oh it. man, it's tasting amazing already. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it really is. It's like starting to thicken up around the mesh now. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, tastes like cream cheese. Yep. Yeah. It, it was, it's gonna taste yep, more and more like cheese, cream cheese. So good. Yeah, yeah. All right, that is a lot of, of kefir. And then it's the, um, what's next? Yeah, kefir and then, uh, and then the cheese and the flowers are in here, right? Yeah. And we'll put and those. And then the ricotta. Oh yeah, chase that. Which, which one? Um, this one. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's on for a little nice crunchy texture. Eek. And they all taste different. Like each level tastes totally different. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's nice. Pretty I'm cool not, texture. I'm not sure how to describe the. Mmm. Uh... Yeah, I like the texture. Um. You want to take dehydrated colostrum? Sure. I d forgot about this. This is. Uh, I would be tr interested to try. I actually didn't mind this at all. I didn't like the cheese that I made out of it, but. Oh yeah. This little one wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. That tastes like cheese. That's really good. It's really nutrient dense. Yeah, it's really enjoyable. Um, you can put good. that on top and sprinkle that on top. Sprinkle, oh yeah. Um, the dehydrated. I think that has more flavor than this one. Mm -hmm. This one has more texture, but. I, well, this is full fat. This oh. is more than full fat. This, this has got so much fat in it. it it's more than if I just um, dehydrated uh, the cheese. And then that is made with the low fat. Uh, the low-fat milk solids left over after making cheese. Mm -hmm. That's extremely, that's why it's crispy mm -hmm. and this is more mm -hmm. chewy. It's got yeah. fat in it. Yeah, this one has like a very robust flavor. Mm -hmm. Could do with some of both. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean, right? It's like my like fingers what I hand. did with the, uh, <laughs> with the way <laughs> up here. It tastes like, uh, some of them taste like shortbread or something. Yeah, almost like a, huh? Like a, um, kind of like a crouton. Yeah. And there's something in there. in with the uh at first i thought you meant this oh my coast um oh. my coast is this thing yeah that is whey that has been uh that has been dehydrated down and then fermented for like a year Ooh. it's blue cheese flavored let me see what it tastes like now it changes Oh, it's so, it's so smelly like cheese. It, yeah, it tastes like cheese. It's really nice. It's really strong. Oh, wow. She wanted the fermentedness, I guess. Weird. Her, she's ate her own fermented way. Not bad. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Getting greed now. <laughs> this is a good um, soup stock also, just like the oh, way. Yeah. way way in general is a great soup stock, like either fresh or knocked down to this consistency or knocked down all the way to this consistency mm -hmm. or down to the salts. Now it's like a vinaigrette. Oh, it's just yep. closer to a vinaigrette. Yeah, now it's great. Yep. Okay, more enjoyable, no? Yeah, that's, um, that is weird. It doesn't taste. It, it doesn't think, it, 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 it didn't, didn't do it, what you thought it was actually did the, <laughs> it, it, Instead of it getting more sour by adding more, a sweeter for all the sweetness. You did something else different. It's weird. Huh. Can I taste that again? Yeah. And, and then we'll throw it on back.
it's good. It's better now, but mm -hmm. it's just weird how it didn't get sour. Mm -hmm. It got more rounded. It's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, throw it, throw it on, or drizzle it on, or whatever you want to do. You got your work. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Hopefully it's not too spicy. Well, hopefully the sweet balances it out. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's good salad. Mm-hmm. That's good a, del a deli salad right there. You could charge for that. <laughs> No, definitely. Like this is like a twenty dollar, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. local board salad. Want to be serving this colostrum crumble mm -hmm. topped wild salads. Except their portions are like this big. Yeah. This is actually like this is like a family size. <laughs> actually filling. Happy sheep. Happy Shepherds. Oh yeah, they make great, great byproducts when they're happy. <laughs> you have to have a slingshot or something to mm -hmm. to enforce negative negative enforcement without you being directly associated with mm -hmm. that negative that negativity. Mm -hmm. Like <clears throat> if you don't have a slingshot to shoot towards the road mm -hmm. to scare them away from the road, and you have to run out like a madman and, and run around them and try to scare them away from the road. You're gonna waste a bunch of energy and just be messing up your trust with the sheep. That's why sh Shepherd's had slings. Hmm. How did you sleep last night? Well, I slept even better than the first night. They were pretty calm. Yeah, they were way more chill last night, huh? They weren't so confused by, by you. Yeah. And you are brave enough to try this. Fermented mustard flour, like a garnish, in my opinion. Fermented. Yeah, just a little bit, because you're not. It's not like a normal kraut that you. Like you'd want to mix this in with cabbage kraut that doesn't really have any flavor, you know, type thing. But it's interesting how it sh the fermentation process changes the flavor of this mustard flour compared to what we ate yesterday in the salad. It's actually really nice. It's 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 different. Uh, and then the main thing is how you age it afterwards and what you do, like what you do to the surface to make it hospitable to the different types of microbes. So you can get blue cheese the easiest because like I was saying, blue cheese is the most predominant in the air and in the atmosphere. Yeah, blue cheeses you can get to grow on che any cheese automatically and if you want one of the other cheeses to grow like the blooming rind is the second most prevalent and you just wash off in any various way of like salt salt brine or vinegar anything you want uh, you can even brush it off dry any way of killing or getting off the blue mold and the white mold, white bloomy rind mold, will come in naturally from the environment and start to settle in as a, a bloomy mold, a white mold on the outside of the cheese. And then if you wash and kill that one away, a orange hue will start to take over the surface of the cheese and it'll get stinky. Um, like the Limburgers and, and it mm. tastes like the Limburgers mm. and the white ones the previous ones are like the Camemberts mm. and the Breeze all the bloomy bloomy rind white cheeses bloomy white rind cheese and the third stage is the uh, washed rind cheeses is what they call them the, the stinky ones Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. whatever microbes on the outside I guess There's two different methods of milking there is the cascading good girl there's a cascading finger method where you apply pressure at the top of the teeth and then the middle and then the bottom to force the milk out and then there's the stripping method where you use a 
like a tugging down method and a sliding of the fingers down the length of the teat to force the milk out. That usually requires some kind of a bag balm. Um, it also is less desirable for the the sheep. They like the cascading effect one more. No, you really don't need to squeeze hard. You just need to close off, oh, close off the teat. top of the teat, uh -huh. and then close off the middle of the teat. Oh, I got it. All right, good. Does it feel good? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> do, do you feel like um like if you um had your own sheep now, you could that you would be more motivated or they're more confident that you could do that now. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I really. In the first seconds, though, you, or the first maybe s minutes, you were kind of discouraged before you got the first squirt. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think that it's really important for people to know how to milk or have tried to milk before uh, they buy their own animals, because when that happens, uh, it's just so easy to throw your hands up. Yeah, I was gonna say you should probably check to see if she's got anything else oh, in there. The real <laughs> I'm so glad that she stood still. I didn't know how she would do because I've never had anyone else mm -hmm. milk her, so that's really cool. Oh God. Like, I have to go and figure this out because this is like the most possible, literally the most direct possible. Like she ate that meal and then we milked her. And how we drank easy it. was? <laughs> okay, so did, did, we just we just uh, ate for the last uh, couple days nothing but uh, but uh, their byproducts and the wild edibles and it was enjoyable the entire time and you and you got everything you feel like you needed right yeah. and it was the easiest like we didn't have to go out hunting and like like it was it was easy it was like automatic it was natural mm -hmm. it was right they came yeah. up to you like comparatively to um working eight uh, to 12 in hour a gardening shift. or or definitely not is not as efficient <laughs> as working 12 hour shifts for subpar food right. yeah that might taste good in a fleeting moment but then it doesn't but feel good tastes, coming out yeah this tastes just as good though i mean you have a great rest of your day Thank enjoy you. the goods all the goods thanks for sharing them with me yeah. i'll talk to you soon all right stay touched yeah, yeah. yay Take your sheep. yeah